Okay, this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the January 12, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, January 12th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Uh, application 5094-21, Tom and Holly Landers seeking to replace 32 windows in home with Harvey Majesty double hung windows in black color at 205 Broad Street. Application 5095-21, and I apologize, but Harold's Cabinetry and Millwork LLC seeking to replace columns on front porch with permacast columns and install timber tech porch decking, white composite railings and new front stairs at 231 Garden Street. Application 5096-21, Doug and Sheila Elliott seeking to remove existing 10 by 14 shed to left rear corner property and remove existing four by eight shed off property at 121 Broad Street. Application 5097-21, Jacqueline Elliott and Brandon Quarter seeking to install four by eight shed and rear yard at 16 Rainer Lane. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or, we, or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 23rd day of December, 2020. Okay, without further ado, we'll jump into the first application, 5094-205 Broad Street, Landers. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello, Doug. Doug Lacella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Uh, I am on tonight for um, on behalf of uh, Tom and Holly, and as you can see, we submitted... Um, Request for replace uh, putting Harvey Majesty replacement windows in on their property. Um, they are going to be uh, black exterior. Um, in the past, uh, I know we've gone back and forth on the Majesties and the um, success and so on and so forth with those, but uh, the the um, Colored ones have not, uh, other than white, have not been an issue. So um, we're hoping that this uh, will pass through easily. Uh, the grid patterns are all going to remain the same. They're going to be simulated divided light. Um, and I think that's about it. Tom and Holly, I think you are on mute. If you want to unmute yourselves in case you want to participate. There you go. Great.
I'm not sure we really we have, we have much more to add to that other than we were trying to make it as consistent with um, the look of uh, the historic homes down here. No, I just wanted, just in case there are any questions, I wanted you to know in advance. Are you planning on painting the house in the trim? Because usually when we see the dark windows, we see the trim is the same color. So it um, is more forgiving. The trim's all currently a dark maroon, so it would blend very well with the current right. trim. If there was any white that was left around it, that would be, it would match the black, but yeah. I mean, right now the windows are white. So we're kind of assuming that everything that was going to be replaced, that that would not be an issue color-wise. Does anyone have any questions for the applicants? Hi, um, just a quick thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not coming through so good, Doug. <laughs> it's not coming through at all. Correct <laughs> <laughs> in the sense that most, uh, stop, most of the sash are white, and the trim is um, dark. Sorry about I'm, that. I'm sorry. Could mm. you say start over? Yeah, start it from is, the beginning, Doug. Uh, you were very garbled. Doug, you there? Can you see me? No. Yeah. No. It's here. Uh, I'll save it for after. <laughs> I'm going to switch devices. We can hear you now. Okay. You can hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I was just going to say I agree with the landers. The sash or white there, I think the trim is already a darker color. Uh, so um, if there's white still exposed after the work is done, as long as uh, the trim is painted a dark color to uh, cover up that, I think it would be all right. Of course, it would be kind of tacky looking if we left it white, so yeah. We're not looking to be tacky. <laughs> I'm not implying that's uh, what you would do. Anybody else have any questions for the applicants? Hearing none, any members of the public? Oh, and you know, Kim, I did not follow your lead and ask you to identify yourselves for the name with name and address for the record, Landers. Doug did, but he's an old pro at this. Uh, you want me to identify myself? Just your name oh, and sorry. address for the record. Holly and Tom Landers at 205 Broad Street. Thank you. Sorry about that. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5095, 231 Garden Street. Anybody? Lee's here. Lee, you're on mute. How's that? Better. There we okay. Go. Uh, Lee Hale, 21 Deerfield Road, representing Heald's Cabinetry and Millwork. Uh, we're looking to rebuild the front porch on Garden Street. Um, looking to use some permacast columns, some composite decking. Uh, I believe I provided some cut sheets to uh, the commission to for their overview and to replace the uh, existing railings uh, in similar fashion with a composite railing. So we're very happy to have you in for this you. project. Um, looking at your application, I had one question. Good. Since, since this is handwritten, if you could just confirm, it talks about the porch steps are going to be widened. Yes. Could you um, just just for all of us give the specific dimensions of those new steps? It's handwritten, uh, not not entirely clear. Uh, in the there's one picture I provided there that shows uh, 
there's some penned over drawing, uh, which would bring the railings down uh, directly in front of the existing posts. So we'd be joining the railings, uh, scribing the railings into the posts uh, on the on the porch top surface and then scribing them back in uh, the same fashion coming down forward uh, down the steps and using a uh, traditional style newel post as opposed to uh, an outriggered newel post. So Lee, does that mean you're widening them by a foot here or? A uh, about a, it's about a foot and change on either side to bring it out. Uh, right now, the, the, the steps are just inboard of the, of the posts. So we'd have to widen them about uh, 14 inches or so on either side, to make them meet up with the, uh, in order to pull the detail off and make it look right. So it'll be, they'll be 28 inches wide, wider. Wider, yes. Okay. Thank you. That's what I was looking for was that dimension. Okay. And then the um, railings across the front, it looks like you show that there has to be a filler or a bar on the bottom to hold them up. Uh, for the length, yeah. Uh, that, that would be true even uh, if we were not using composite too, because eventually they just kind of sag. And the material, you, so you reference the skirt stair risers to be milled from PVC sheet goods. That's correct. Um, but that's a flat stock. It's not a, a shiny finish, am I correct? No, yeah, that's just the, the regular flat stock. And we'll be painting uh, all of that uh, to match the existing uh, paint that's on the house too. I usually don't, um, uh, use the PVC finish as a finished product just because sometimes it will actually, uh, where it's been machined, it will attract uh, certain types of uh, um, mold, green and not, not mold, mildew it would be. If you don't get a finished product uh, all, all the way across the surface. So uh, just out of mild curiosity, yeah. why do you use it? I mean, it's gonna mold and you have to paint it. So you still have maintenance. So. Why are you using plastic? I'm so just, I mean, it's just my own information. Please. Yeah, well, it, it, uh, uh, in my past experience, if we're gonna use a, a new wood product, um, and matter of fact, even on my own front porch where I've done work here, the, the wood is not uh, as good quality as it would have been a hundred years ago. Um, the wood a hundred years ago was uh, very tight grained and it didn't let the, uh, <laughs> atmosphere and, and conditions into it. These days, your wood product is very loose ringed and it will let water into it immediately. And therefore, uh, PVC is just a better answer overall. And what are this, what, what is the, are you changing the, the, the deck material and the stair steps? I see the treads are gonna, I mean, the risers are gonna be PVC. What are the steps gonna be? The steps will be the same as the decking material, the uh, okay. coastline porch, Thanks. AZEC porch. And the AZEC porch is a tongue and groove product? It is. It is, okay. And the quote unquote end grain will be facing the street? The end grain will be facing the street on the porch surface. Yeah, okay. Uh, on the steps, it will not be. It will be the side. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now I'm just wondering whether you were planning on doing a, a different edging for the porch itself. Uh, no, 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 to make it look like a, a traditional porch would be laid on there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And also, you know, when you put that uh, an edge band on the front of a porch like that, and then you ran the boards the other way too, you'd be inviting the water to come back into the porch and have a problem back over again. So the edge banding is not a good idea. But it's plastic. In, in the handwritten notes, uh, as far as paint color goes, you said the preference is white? Yes. Okay. And that's what you're going to go with? I believe so. Okay, great. All right. right now, the, uh, 
the bottom of the port surface uh, where we're proposing to use the PVC it's product. Great. It's gray now. And uh, we want to try to highlight that a little bit better, brighten it up. Yep. Either one would work equally well. Say again? Either one would work well. Yeah, I mean, it works, but a, you know, it's a little cleaner look with the yep. white, yeah. Whatever makes applicant happy. <laughs> okay. And the things that are not called out are, are going to remain the same. You're using what's there. I'm sorry. I, so I, the, the under the porch there, is all of that going to be painted white and you're using the same material that's already there or that's going to be replaced with something too? Under the porch? The lattice work and the stuff lattice like that. Work. The lattice work will be replaced along with that. That's what we're, uh, the last comment was about the PVC material. I have to rebuild all the framing of the porch and everything. The whole thing is coming apart, so. So what is the lattice work going to be? It'll be PVC also. Plastic porch. Yep. Does anyone else have any questions? Hearing none. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, 5096. Doug and Sheila Elliott, 121 Broad Street. Hi. Sheila, uh, Sheila Elliott, 121 Broad Street. Thank you. Okay. Tell us about your project tonight. Okay, so uh, with the existing application, our, our project that's under work, under ways with the previous application, we, um, after getting rid of the pool, we would just want to move where the shed, existing shed is over to the corner, which was previously a pool deck area um, with pavers. So it's just moving it across the yard. Seems pretty easy. Does anyone have any questions? And the other shed is going away? The other shed is, is leaving the property, yep. Okay, and that's going around the corner to Rainer? Yes, it is, <laughs> yes. Yep, Two we might just walk one. it down the road, yeah. <laughs> Two for one, great. Does anyone else have any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Sheila. Any members of thank the you. public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the shed around the corner. Doug and Sheila Elliott at 120, oops, I'm sorry. Jack, Jacqueline and Brandon at 16 Rainer Lane. Yes, uh, Jackie Elliott at 16 Rainer Lane and we are looking to move the shed uh, to our backyard. We, uh, I proposed two different locations and I'd like to just throw in another one just so that um, when we get into the backyard, we have approval for um, all the different options. So there's two outlines um, behind the garage, one parallel and one perpendicular with the garage. And I'd like to propose just the back left corner. Um, and of course we would obey all of the, the five foot minimum distance from the, um, the, the line. What's your number one preference? Um, I think the perpendicular with the garage is, is the top preference right now. Um, it'll be hard, hard to know until it's in the yard and um, seeing where the sun is in the summer and all that. So what you'd like is for us to approve all three so you can choose one of those once the shed gets there? Um, yes. Just, I just want to make sure. Yes. That's first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just hate to get it in and then look into the corner and say, oh, it would be best in that back corner, but we don't have approval and have to go through the process again. So um, yes, that's what we're, we're hoping for. All right. Sounds good. Does anyone else have any questions? Hearing none. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Come on, mom, you have to weigh in. No? Okay, <laughs> moving on. To the, I'm we'll voting start. for, in favor. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to our final of the night, 5098, uh, the application for 33 Belmont. Doug, you're on mute. I know, thanks, Kim. <laughs> Not very smart here with this stuff, but all right, so, um, I'm back, uh, Doug Lucella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street. Um, 
We have uh, the addition going on presently at 33, which is my neighbor, John Gammy. Um, in the original application, uh, we, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, just everybody disappeared. So uh, in the original application on the east side, we requested to, um, there's what, what's called down here in these Hubbard houses, they, they refer to them sometimes as T-shaped windows. There's a, a double hung and two smaller windows to the side of them. They have been very common in the, um, in the houses down here, in the kitchens. Um, so the original application, we were gonna have, we were gonna get rid of the two flankers and, and um, make a slightly different size double hung. Uh, the request now is to remove all three windows uh, for purposes of, um, and, and the reason behind that is for, to get uh, cabinet space in, in the small kitchens. Um, that's been done in multiple houses right around the neighborhood here. Uh, the intention is to eliminate the windows. Again, it's east side, driveway side, if I'm, my direction is correct, and um, infill it with matching um, siding. We have approved some in the district. We've also denied some in the district on this issue. I think we've had uh, split decisions in the past. Is, it, is there any reason why you couldn't cover them up um, but leave them looking as windows, but with a solid center as we've seen on some of the other houses? That's a possibility. Um, certainly that's a possibility, yes. So we would have to go back. If that were the option, we would have to go back to, um, well, I, there, uh, I'm just trying to recall some of them uh, by memory here in the neighborhood. Some of them actually had the flankers uh, plywooded over like a, a faux panel or something, if you will, uh, and then left a window. Uh, there's one uh, on the opposite side of the street, a few up more recently that, um, and maybe this is what I should have done is uh, gone ahead and gotten rid of them and begged for forgiveness later. <laughs> Uh, because I know that's what happened over there. So look, you guys know me, I, I'm willing to work with anybody here. Um, the, the optimal way, the, the problem with doing that is, and, and we've done that. I, I did it on the, um, the old dentist office on Garden Street on a window. Uh, the reason for doing that particularly was because it's a brick building and then trying to patch in the brick is very difficult. Um, the, the problem with putting a faux window in there like that is you, you lose, um, you, even though you can insulate it, there, there, there's issues that go along with it. Um, the, in, the, in the perfect world, we would infill it and slide over it and pretend those in the windows were never there. However, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what you guys have to say on that and um, make the appropriate choice. Thank you. I just wanted to throw it out there as a possibility. Um, anyone else have any questions on this? I assume the window is going to be to match the other windows. Oh, no windows. I mean, none. No, no windows. I thought there was a window drawn in in the center. No, no. previously we had approved that. It was going to be a larger one, but now he's asking all three will be gone. Gotcha. We've approved the elimination of two. Oh, so that would be really strange to brick those in then. I'm not following along at all tonight. Oh. Sorry, Doug. That's okay, uh, Jen. So, so it's it's not brick. I, I was just using the analogy of another job I did. No, no, I got it. I got it. Where we bricked it in. This, I'm is, on board. this is blackboard <laughs> siding. So, okay. Could I, uh, could I ask a question? Um, is there any interest in? Uh, I mean, if for some reason, Doug, when we get to the uh, public meeting, where we can't talk to you as easily. Uh, yep. If at that point there's a real concern over losing some or all of what's there, uh, what do you think of uh, putting some sort of, of uh, replacement paneling where the windows were as an alternative uh, or shutters? Um, is that something of any interest? We just yeah. talked about that. Sorry. <laughs> I, 
I'm sorry, Claire. What? I, may have been, I may have been confused by that because I'm I'm not saying to um, keep the uh, an imitation window. That was discussed as well. No, it wasn't, Doug. You, you're you're right. So so yeah. one of the options. So what what I think Jen was asking originally was um, kind of keeping a window or some of the windows in place and just kind of uh, blocking them off from the inside. That was my mistake, right. Doug, because I was under the impression you were looking at the picture, you were keeping the center window. And okay. so I thought just paneling in the two sides to retain the T was reasonable, but I think that maybe it's less reasonable to expect three windows, including that bigger window to be paneled over. But it's certainly, if Doug is interested in that, that's fine. He can certainly ask about that. Okay. It's just a, it's just a thought. Like I said, when we get to the public meeting, if people think that siding is, uh, that there's going to be too much siding there and that this won't work, uh, to me that uh, might be an alternative to consider as well. But um, you know, knowing that your first choice is siding uh, means that I'm sure that will be the first thing that's considered there. I was just thinking of um, what we see in some houses in the district where uh, either a permanent shutter has been placed there or a permanent raised panel has been placed. So uh, that was my question. Thanks. Okay, and, and fair enough, Doug. Um, the only thing I would say is that I, I've seen a few of them around where there was the, uh, the raised panel, if you will. I, I think a shutter is not the appropriate, and maybe you didn't mean it, to, but there's no shutters on the house. There's very few shutters around. So sure. uh, I, don't, I don't think that would work. I, I have seen them with the raised panels. Um, to me, uh, I, I didn't take the addresses down, but I, I know there's some right around here I could throw a rock to that did exactly that. Um, and I've also compared them to the houses that infill them. And quite frankly, the ones with the, the panels and the, the faux look, um, look like something was being covered up, quite frankly. Understand. The, the reason why I asked about it is there's uh, a number, I think there are a number of houses in the district that have stairways that go up across uh, a uh, second floor window. And uh, I think, the uh, uh, the uh, house that may be around 30, uh, broad, 30 Broad Street or thereabouts is one of them where um, the, the window frame is there, but because there's a stairway, all, all there is is a closed shutter. So I agree with you. You want something that works with the rest of the house. And I'm not uh, trying to drive us towards anything that wouldn't look good there. Uh, including um, all siding. So thanks for a few minutes to talk about that. So what, one other point to that is, um, and, and again, when I, when I was looking around and I am familiar with the houses in the neighborhood, obviously, um, because I live right here, uh, you really have to look hard to, to see that side of the, the, the elevation of most of the Hubbard houses here on, on Garden, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Belmont and Church and Woodland. Woodland, I don't think has any of that detail, but more than allow them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we didn't quite make it up to that end of the street, but um, so yeah, I've, I've seen them and you really do have to kind of, uh, you know, crane your neck to see it down the driveway side because that's typically where they were and you know in, in the day when these beautiful homes were built uh, cabinet space and kitchen space wasn't as important and uh, so now we're taking a 10 by 12 kitchen and trying to maximize the, uh, the, the livable space inside thank you Good. thank you anyone else have any questions Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Uh, yes, I would like to speak. Lee Hale, 21 Deerfield Road. Are we there? Yep, go yes, ahead, Mr. Hale. Oh, Okay, uh, yeah, I was gonna say that uh, in that situation when you're trying to um, either remove a window or try to mock up something that might kind of look the part, um, it's much more discerning 
uh, in a bad way to see it mocked up there in a bad fashion as opposed to be removed and cited in, in my opinion. And when you see it mocked up, um, it's a dead giveaway that somebody's not done their done their homework. <coughs> Excuse me. So that that's uh, just a little bit from the the general public. Yeah, but Doug can do good work. I was going to say, are you implying exactly. that Doug Costello is going to do it, a good job? It it takes a it takes a good eye and and uh, you know high skill to really pull it off and make it look the part. That was it. Thank you very much. Okay. We have kind Thanks, of Thanks for us. the uh, kind words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving to the public meeting. Uh, the application 5094 205 Broad Street. I'll move, move to, to oops, sorry. Go ahead. I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second. Discussion. I oh. think that uh, the concerns that came up during the discussion were addressed uh, by the homeowner, so we could um, uh, assume that the uh, as presented includes the. Um, work around the trim with paint that we're concerned about in terms of uh, putting a dark color um, in any places where there might be white, um, unless they want to come back to us to discuss a change. Um, as far as the um, uh, window type goes, as the uh, contractor Doug indicated to us, uh, we haven't had as much difficulty with this window in a dark color. Uh, and this is a house where that uh, dark color uh, might be especially appropriate. It's going to be a change because 32 windows going from white to black will uh, certainly be a change, but it's one that I think will eventually uh, uh, look like it's always been there uh, for both the homeowner and visitors. Anyone else? Uh, Doug, keep in mind that if they're saying wood windows, they can paint them any color they want. So, you know, it's it's a yes. color change. That's about it. Now, the bigger issue, and Mr. LaSalle is lucky I'm not voting tonight, I, is the standard issue is it's a replacement window. You're, lo you're losing glass area, you're increasing uh, trim area, and, but- I'm sure you meant the homeowner. Sorry? I'm sure you meant the homeowner. We're voting for the homeowner, not the contractor, I believe is what you meant to say. The, just, just for the record. Well, yeah. If you did, I'm, I could give you a chance. The presentation was done by Doug, though. Yes, but but let's agree that we're voting on homeowners. I, I think you're, this, yep. that record shouldn't You're reflect that. I object to you saying it to a, calling out a contractor, Bassett. Maybe that's not your intention. I apologize. No, I'm, not, I'm not calling him out. No, but you, you mentioned that to his... You, you said you came right on and said, since I'm not voting, he's lucky, the contractor. Yeah, when we're I'm, voting on a homeowner, and I, and I think you misstepped there. I'm just pointing it out and we can move on. Fine, we can discuss it later. In any event, I think that you uh, raised the issue of the uh, ins uh, this being an insert window, um, Vatsik, uh, or a replacement window. Uh, if you'd like to elaborate about that, uh, I can, from my take, answer it by saying that I do think that because of the dark color of the window, the amount of glass loss is going to be less uh, um, evident than it would be with the uh, white window. So uh, I think that uh, also this house is a um, uh, masonry house uh, by in its finish. And so because it has that um, stucco exterior, um, the amount of uh, window light changing from one to the other, I think will be less evident than it would be if the house were wood clapboard and there were a trim that was much more evident uh, and, and less forgiving in the window change. 
still a loss. Understand. Yeah. And I would normally be with you uh, on a different color. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add? Hearing nothing further, all those in favor say aye. 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 Who voted so far? Looks like Doug and myself. Uh, Chris, I said that aye, Chris. I won. heard the others. And Doug, did you vote? I did. I voted yet yeah, aye, okay. and I thought I heard uh, the others. All those, all those opposed? Opposed. Nay. The motion carries, the application is approved. Application 5095, uh, 231 Garden Street. May I have a motion? I'll, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to make the motion to approve on this. Uh, is there, uh, although I'm certainly not going to argue against it. It's just uh, I had some difficulty with my uh, connection during the presentation. Classic. Do you have stipulations? Uh, no. You know, I think what was presented. You need a motion. Yep. Uh, I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second for discussion. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, I think what women, this, not ladies, Mr. baby. Hale, oh, <laughs> sorry. What Mr. Hale presented is basically a duplicate of what is there, uh, with the obvious exception of the stairs and the position of the railings. Uh, once the material that he's proposing to use is painted, it will be. Un, it's going to be impossible to differentiate that from a painted wood product. Uh, I think the difference is that come 20 years from now, he won't be back doing this job again. And if he was using a wood product, certainly for the stairs and for some of the under, uh, for some of the wood, if he was using wood, some of the stuff closer to the ground would be replaced easily within 20 years. So uh, I, this is an example, I think, a very good example of where using a modern material to re replicate an existing look, a wood look is very appropriate. I guess my one concern is the lattice because I haven't really seen a composite lattice that still looks like wood. So what I understood Mr. Hale to say is he was gonna be making the lattice out of PVC as opposed to purchasing a pre-molded thing then that would probably alleviate my concern. Probably. Any other questions, any other comments? Any other I comments? think maybe Jen, then we stick because it is gonna be painting even the composite that maybe, cause we're always worried about the sheen. What is, you know, what, what is the finish on some of these products when we come up with the name, you know, a, a, a Trex versus Azac. So, so maybe we just stick that he paints the um, lattice as well too, maybe to map since most of it, the columns, things are gonna be painted. Uh, I'll, I'll modify my um, motion with the lattice work to be painted to match. Claire, will you second that? Yes. I, I think that Vasek um, looked like he was about to say something oh, there. I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm, I was just gonna tell Chris that uh, actually for, for all of you, if you look at the hand, handwritten drawings associated with the photograph, they say that everything will be painted. Right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. But, okay. Well, everybody, may I, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries as submitted. Jennifer. The stipulation for the lattice to be painted as well. Thank you. Um, and I'm very happy to see that being done now. Application 5096 121 Broad Street. May I have a motion? Move to approve is submitted. I'll second. I don't think we need much discussion on this one. Anybody? Minimal impact on the district. Accessory building movement. Thank you. All those and removal. Favor, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5097, 16 Rainer Lane. May I have a motion? Motion to approve is submitted. Second. Again, 
you know, um, I think all lo locations are pretty appropriate for, for the outbuilding. I agree. Minimal impact. Anything further? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries as submitted. Moving on, approval of December 8 minutes. No, one more, uh, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just every time lately, I yeah, rushed that's along. Right. <laughs> Application 509833 Belmont. Sorry, Doug. And I have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second it. I, I think, um, I, I hate to lose those two windows, no doubt, but in recognition of what it allows them on the interior of the home. And one was done just, you know, again, it was forgiveness and permission that spec house on Belmont street. I, I think with the, where this face is on that, that driveway side, that east side, it is further back in the home, the density of the homes together. H hate to lose it, but it, it, it's appropriate. I, I think that's a unique shingle pattern too. It has two, it's almost like 10 over two again. So I, I think it's gonna, gonna look good. Uh, with those windows removed I think it will be appropriate I do have an interest in saving these T windows um, especially if they're going to keep a center window to save the two side windows um, I think that uh, it is a more narrow look the houses are pretty close together on that street but I'm not saying I would be in favor of it in every situation I think that it helps um, Chris you're right having the double look shingle takes away from the fact that it's a broad expanse there. It doesn't leave you a, a wide expanse of, um, for instance, if it were a narrow um, siding without any of that detail, I think it would look pretty bad and I probably wouldn't vote in favor of it, but I, I think that I can live with it um, along with our prior decisions on this particular case. You know, not, not necessarily using it as a, precedent for other houses that may not be exactly situated. I agree with you, uh, Jen. I mean, there are some situations where the fenestration, the pattern on the side of the house, that there's such a call out for symmetry that we would have the situation, like I mentioned before, where you have these second floor closed windows with uh, a shutter over them. Um, but then there are other places like we've seen on this street where uh, the building can suffer the loss of the, of the uh, window um, because the um, replacement siding is of interest itself uh, because there wasn't really symmetry to begin with uh, in, the, in the fenestration. Um, I, you know, I'm ultimately, uh, sympathetic to the form follows function uh, arguments that these folks are talking about on the inside. Uh, I'm not sure where they're gaining the light that uh, they're losing, uh, but hopefully they are along the back where we uh, aren't uh, seeing, the, seeing the, the light. But it's the rear side line of a building that I think doesn't require uh, the fenestration uh, to still be uh, uh, look authentic. So. Uh, I'm uh, willing to go along with the request here. I am. Um, I agree with Jen um, that the T windows are something to save, not as a design element, but as an historic fabric. It's part of the development of a district shows consistent themes across houses. So I do think that it's something that we need to pay attention to separate from any what the design of the house is. Um, in this situation, it is very far back. You stood on the sidewalk, tried to look. You really don't particularly notice it. So I think um, that on this one, the tie goes to the homeowner, but could very easily go in a different direction on another house. I agree, Claire. Well put. Anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries as submitted. Moving on now to the approval of minutes of December 8, 2020. Can I have a motion? Make a motion to approve as submitted and give the floor to Doug so we can thank everyone. <laughs> thank you. Uh, the usual discussion, our appreciation to Linda, our reporter. 
uh, and also at this time to our hist historic district coordinator, Kim, um, for helping all of us, uh, as well as all the members of the public. Thank you. All those in favor? Thanks, Doug. Aye. 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 Other business tonight, Kim, do we have any public, other public comments or a report? No, but um, who seconded the minutes? I didn't catch it. Was Doug, were you seconding as you were? Sure. <laughs> Give it, yes. Of course he was. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. That's a given. <laughs> no, we don't have any comments. We don't have any reports. We don't have any correspondence. Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn, please. Don't move. move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, happy everyone, for a quick and happy evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.